to get Ackerman. I'm sorry. Now remember what I ask, Mother. A morsel of luck. Or you won't be just blind. We walked into a police trap. Police get Ackerman? I don't know. If I go down, you go too, Greenwood, did they? I can't say I know when I don't, can I? If the police have Ackerman, the company ceases to exist, Greenwood. So will you. <coughs> Hog out, is it in? A deal. Ackerman, you're in a hurry now. Don't fancy it here. A bit smelly. But the deal. Now I've learned your language is simple. Lennox dead. Simple. You killed Lennox? Yes. I asked before, didn't I? You refused. Is that all? No. In return, I get freedom. Not your property anymore. But you're so useful, Ackerman. You're my screw on Lennox. Now he's not dead yet, is he? Agree. Or kill me now. Now? Yes. Now. <laughs> Uncle! You stupid niece. Now, what'd you do that for? <laughs> I'm no use to you, dead. Lloyd Ryan's yard under observation. Yes, yes, then you got hit. We had to get out, otherwise... Yes, Greenwood, yes. The law didn't get Ackerman. No? No! I'm sorry, Mr. Lennox, but they can't have. Because otherwise I'd have heard. They'd have been here with a warrant for me, thanks to you. You assume the darker man has escaped, both you and the police. Yeah, and Hog. It's Ackerman alone now. And intending to damage us on his own initiative. Yeah, he's sentimental. And you're realistic. Realistic enough to hope he's alone and vulnerable. Indeed, you need to pray so, don't you, Greenwood? I do. Don't worry, we'll get him for you. Good. Accept that. And Ryan. Have you had time to be hopeful about him, too? No, I haven't. It should. Take time now. That's the next hope for me, for you, that Ryan's dead. You know that? I haven't viewed his body. But the logic for Hogarth's inevitable. But, but Hogg's ruined his whole... No, no. Nice. First rule. Hogarth won't have neglected it. He's a climber. Destroy any area to which old loyalties might drift back. Listen, you don't know enough yet. Not to talk to Lennox. Don't I? Not when I've got you again. I am with you. Same thing. What does it matter? <laughs> He's worse than you are. 
I warned you. I'm still waiting for an answer. Where's Ryan? You don't have to answer that. Ryan floats with the tide. Yeah. Yes. Lennox will have assumed that as well. Jesus. What is it, is it? Your old governor and you're still shaking? Right, I can talk while Uncle suffers. He's got these guilt glands. Wait. I have waited. Please. Lennox will have assumed Ryan's death. He believes in that kind of logic. So do I, Ackerman. He'll be looking for confirmation. Hard. From you. He needs a bargaining point. I'm going to give him one. His certain knowledge of Ryan's killing against my knowledge of him. Right. You've got it. Now give me room. Let me talk to Lennox. Use your head, use your creeping ambition. It can still all work out for you. I know. I know what to say. I'm interested in me too. Your advice has been noted. Good. So hope's secure. Wouldn't you be? That's why I still need clear evidence of Ryan's death. Your job, Greenwood. I can't. You can walk. You can organize others. How many men have we available? How many do you want? Twenty. Twenty is a minimum. Twenty careful inquirers. The law will be looking as well. Lennox, me as ever. You can breathe a bit longer. Why? I've still got Ackerman. Alive. He's in partnership with me now, or so he says. But he insists on what he calls his freedom. And you've agreed? Yeah, it's convenient for the moment. But you and me had an agreement too, didn't we, Lennox? Ackerman is my guarantee of 25% of you. But you didn't keep faith, did you? You raided Ryan's yard while I was busy. You failed. I was lucky again. But as a result, I now feel free to pass Ackerman under the law. They'd give their goggle eyes for what he's got on you. Your takeover is now complete. It always has been. No. I don't know what you mean. I dislike stating the obvious, particularly on the phone. We need to meet. No, you need to meet. I don't. But I can be generous. We carry on as agreed. But after, I'll be asking 50% at least. Cheers. Well, he tried to bargain. He's got no proof, only logic. The law can use that as well. When they find Ryan. OK. So why blow now? We're just getting to the gristling it. So, a baggy old drunk committed suicide. Now, get me concrete confirmation on Ryan. An Ackerman? Well, Hogarth continues to hold him. Whatever the Ackerman may think to the contrary. And Hogarth's ambitious. Indeed, more ambitious than before. So our agreement will stand. He wants to get Mr Gould out. So I see no reason why I should prevent him. And at this juncture... You still say you were alone in Ryan's scrap shop? Yeah, didn't you, Ian? As a night watchman? Yeah, I told you that too when you come buzzing round the first time. Good. That's one lie established, at least. It's the truth. It's God's own truth. I'm not talking to you no more. You bleed and charge me or... Oh, with using foul language. Well, what did I say? You didn't even notice, did you? No. And I wasn't doing nothing. Just happened I was there. Just happened I was there looking after the shop. When two cars loaded with armed thugs bust their way in, you don't know who they were or why they came? No, I bloody don't. You're the law, you tell me. You do know, but you're afraid to speak. I'm not. No. Look, if I knew, I'd tell you. I think I prefer your straightforward lies, Raspberry, to your protestations of good faith. Where's Ryan? We've been looking for him, as you know. We think he might be able to help us into our inquiries into the sudden death of Moira Gould. She burst all over you, didn't she? May God help me. You 
Yeah, you need somebody's help. And I demand my solicitor. Yeah. You were not alone. Other men, apart from the raiders, escaped us. Somebody locked you in that room. Somebody took your shoes. Boots. I wear boots. All right, boots. Somebody took your boots. No, I locked myself in for safety. Those men came for you? Yeah, then you came and rescued me. And I was glad. Thanks. Now I want to go home. The boots? Took them off myself so as to be extra quiet. And one of your constables nicked them. Now, I didn't say anything because I don't like to drop anybody in it, if I can possibly help. You told me that Ryan left the yard about five. Yeah. You wish to go back on that? No, it's true. Alone? Yeah. I'd like you to go back on that. Would you? Yes. Ryan did not leave alone. He bloody did. No. Ryan didn't leave at five alone or otherwise. Those men came for Ryan. He was in the room where we found you. That's when he went with them. No. I believe that. Do you? I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Thank you. I'm afraid I must insist on the truth, Raspberry, now, rather than local colour. It appears you were almost the last person to see Ryan alive. I shouldn't have come here. I shouldn't have... I'm not Hogg's property. No, I Never but... was. He thought you were. No, not then. I think so now. What's the difference? You and me making love instead of me and Hog. Oh, thanks. You look so old. We're none of us Peter Bloody Pan anymore. Are we? Were we ever? Perhaps Hog's right to be so realistic. Don't answer it. Jesus Christ! No. He'll kill us! Would you prefer to be dressed when that happens? Wouldn't you? I don't know, I don't think so. I'm not sure it matters anymore. Besides, somebody's got to answer the door. He'll still have a key, if only for sentimental reasons. Wear something, for God's sake, his aunt will be with him. You didn't zip your fly, Raymond. You supply comfort for the troops, but not for me. It was the other way round. I needed him. You whore. <coughs> There's no time for this. Doesn't matter who she is or what she says, she's not the point. <coughs> <coughs> So Raymond gets a bunk up over the wall and comes here to have her. That's not the point. Not to care, to notice. When it's her, her. Is it right? You've got no time for personal feelings anymore. Just be thankful she survives. There's another head well up by Scotch Yanks. All right. I'll feel later. You can let go. Both of you. You get dressed. You're indecent. Hello, Spice. It's me. Where the devil were you? We're at Hogg's old place. Where's Ryan? Yes. Yes, we can. Now get here as fast as you can. Bring Grange with you. Hogg is anxious to get down to practicalities. Raymond said you yes. took him for a drive. All right. Now, Did he? Now listen, Spice. Do just two things. Ring Gilman and ring Pritchard. Did you? Yes. Yes, I did. Tell him it's all as was. Scott Yank's raid on Ryan hasn't made a difference at all. Now, Hogg is still in control. Now, batten those two boys down. We're on to 50% of Scott Yank's. Ryan's dead. They killed him. So why tell her that? Just so she knows what she's with now? 
I'm not with him. Yes, I Oh, yes, you are. Doll. Now that you know. Thanks. There's more ways of screwing than screwing. Well, you don't give a monkey any more, do you? Well, I'm beginning to taste freedom. It could turn sour on you. No. Never again. No, Spice. Hog's more solid than ever. What? Why? Why did you? Get rid of Ryan. Because I'm up to there. So there's nothing to bleed and do except swim to the other side. Yes. And how far is that? Oh, God. You sure? Spicer reckons the law's got raspberry. Yes, so do I. I needed his boots. Little big Judas here had taken mine. Will he hold? Could be just out of habit. Spicer. You recognize this voice? You're not allowed to bug phones. No, I shall, I'm breaking the law. Whose voice is that? I'm going to report you. Yes, I shall be reprimanded. Whose voice is that? You're not allowed to take away our privacy. No. Who's speaking? But he insists on what he calls his freedom. I had to be free from Ryan. Doesn't hurt you. So I am free. Right? <laughs> This one, not that one. Yes, Buckinghamshire's sensitive. It's cover on both sides of the road, the bend, the T-junction. Yeah, that's it. We'll see. There's a dot on the map. It's a building. It could be a farmhouse. Yeah, well, we'll see, won't we? But this is it. Between Newbury and Litchfield, I can feel it. Not Buckinghamshire. The cat's eyes have had built-in radar ever since the Royal Mail got raped. Could be they relax when they get south. I wouldn't. No, but you need to learn, Uncle. Once you've ambushed the van and got Gould out, what are you just doing with him? Sell him to Lennox, what else? After you is my next way in for more Scott Yanks. Sure, Lennox, you can have your chairman back, so long as I'm on the board too. Yes. Then you reckon you'll be free to go, huh? I am and I shall. Yeah, but you've watched me for a long time, Ackerman. You know so much about me. Don't worry, you're not Lennox yet. <laughs> but I begin to see how he feels about you. Lennox will be gone, I promise you and myself. That just increases my risk, doesn't it? So, we go in here. Yeah, it's afternoon. Pay attention, we haven't finished yet. Sorry, what's the time? We need somewhere to mine Ghoul while he's bargaining with Lennox. Here. Well, it's not exactly the maximum security Ghoul's accustomed to, is it? There's Jimmy's flat in Southgate. Where's Bleeding Southgate and who's Jimmy? I want Gould Central where I can see him. And you, Spicer. Wherever you put him, they better not have any mirrors. Every time I see myself, I forget to think clearly. <laughs> but don't worry. You won't be one of his minders. There's other things you can lose as well as your face, Spicer. So can you. That's enough. It's a, just a job. We're all in it. Yes, but the cake's been cut up before it's even been baked, isn't it, is it? Jesus Christ. Ring a ring of roses, do we all fall down? They're like kids. He did this to me, so I'll do that to him. He knows so much, can I afford to let him go knowing so much? What does all of this matter now? It's in the past, it's over. We've got the chance, the big take. Scott Yanks. If we get Gould and we're in the clear, then nothing holds us. It's the big win. It's not 25%, it's not 50%, it's 100 per bloody cent. We stand on the edge of the whole metropolis. You're worried about your beauty spots, and you're worried about him and her, and you're worried about him and you. We need to be a machine. Yeah, thanks, Uncle. Well, I'm glad you listened, son. Yeah, yeah, I did, I heard. Right. We wreck you the ground this afternoon, 2.30 start from Gloucester Road. The prison van will have a radio, as well as the escorts. 
They could borrow a police van. They're even better equipped. Grange. What? How do you silence the radios? Jam them. Right. Loughborough for you so we know the exact odds. Today. Tomorrow. We all need to see the possible ambush points. OK, that's it. I need some sleep. Yeah. Cheers. Let yourselves out quietly. And take the Lone Ranger with you. Hang on. I want my shoes. I better go. It's done now. Just like as it says. I mean, nobody ever tells you just how tired you get, Raymond. Except she can sleep right through. I want you to get Gould. Yeah. I'll have everything. But it seems like I've already inherited everything and everybody. This job. Ryan was to do it for Scott Yanks. All Ryan's men. All the bastard King's bastards. Even Spicer looking for his angle out of his face. You need to watch him. Don't I know that? And Lennox I must watch, Ackerman, Izzard even. Izzard straight? Yeah. Like a smiling boomerang. No, he is, really. He crossed up Ryan. For you. Was it? Even you I must watch now, Raymond. I've apologised already. Yep. Not to mention the law. It's all got to be bloody watched. How do you sleep with your eyes open, Raymond? Well, is that bad? Pull out. Yeah. We always say that, don't we? You can always sail away to summertime. Well, it's not true. No. Not since Ryan. Dear mother. Ah, oh, you're just tired. You've done better than we ever imagined when we started. You'll be okay. You need breakfast? Yeah. So go and get me some. There's, there's a milk machine. Then go and bloody milk it. Yeah. Yeah. Me and you. You say you're the same. But it's me that isn't. Well, what was I when I was different, Edge? Describe me to me. Now, you're busy, aren't you? Sleeping off Raymond. You mustn't shut me out, Edge. I want to touch you. I want to. And I can't. Oh, God. Yes, I'm gone. <coughs> what? You with the others. I was talking to you. I wanted to touch you, and I couldn't. You can. I was afraid that if I did. Raymond I... was afraid, too. Why him, Edge? Why him? He was as close as I could get to you. He stayed nearer to himself than you were. What was that? It's always me. You're all I see. Then stop looking. I try. I've tried. Kiss me. How can I now? Like you used to. You make it sound simple. What's so funny? Somebody else has said that. Just like that. Never thought you would. When I got that last key for Mantinsky's. That manager bastard. He talked about insurance too. You didn't mind about him. 
Why do you mind about Raymond? Don't you feel dirty? No, there's no such word. Yes, there is. Is there now for you, Hawk? No. No. I'm frozen. I'm tired. Let me walk. Please. I can. I will. You're still going to play that to Lennox? We shall see. He's here, plus half the inns of court, the shady side. I only want him. Well, he'll refuse to speak at all without legal representation. I shall be doing the talking, John. Hmm. What is it? Did you dream last night? Yeah, what was left of it. Mm. Send in Lennox and three coffees. Well, we can only hope that some more shapes will appear out of the fog, John. Why bother? You'll lie. And I trust with his habitual consistency. Ah, oh, good morning, Lennox. Kind of you to come. But I only ask for you. My solicitor, Mr. Yes, Mayor. I know of him. Ask him to wait outside. I'm not prepared to say anything. Why not? You know perfectly well there's no question of a charge yet. I'm sorry, Bruce. A fool's errand. Yes. Had a choice of evils this morning, Lennox. Come in. Ah, thank you. To call a conference of all the departments involved in the events of the past few weeks, or to talk to you. Thank you. I couldn't face all those tired faces from forensic. So, you. You'd have done better to talk among yourselves. Oh, we still can. And options always open to us. Now then. Our first problem involves you and your company. The deaths of your colleagues Singleton and Cardno followed rather too abruptly for our comfort by that of Moira Gould, the daughter of your chairman at present detained in Loughborough Prison. And then finally this morning, Ryan. Four deaths, Lennox. It's asking a lot of us. Professionally or personally? Both. I was sitting beside Moira Gould when she was shot in the face. Our investigations to date link all four killings in this way. Singleton and Cardinal were killed by an unknown person in the presence of Moira Gould. Now she and this unknown person went into hiding separately. Moira Gould to the house of a man at one time a member of Ryan's and, how shall I put it, group. We found her there. She lied to us. But consistently enough to confirm our supposition of an unknown killer who could rely on others to clear up the mess he'd made. Let's call him um, Ackerman. Now, so crucial was the evidence that Moira Gould could have given us that she was killed while in our custody. Presumably by the same person who cleared up after the murders of Singleton and Cardno, hmm? Is that a question? Yes, but rhetorical for the moment. Now, that's one side of our concern. We have another. The other side of the same grubby coin. Ryan. His death by drowning, while too full of alcohol, could have been suicide. He could have tied his own feet together to prevent any second thoughts when finally in the river. Or somebody, a rather brash person, could have tied them for him. Our second unknown link. I can't call him a killer just yet. And I don't know who he is. No name, no description. But I do begin to know what he must have done. I would suggest that he raided three jeweller's shops belonging to a firm called Mandinsky. 
Now, the money from these raids he has used, or is using, to buy out Ryan's organisation. Now, let me suppose that since Moira Gould's hiding place connects her with Ryan, it's likely that both she and Ackerman also went to Ryan for help. And that Ackerman told Ryan that he was the killer of Singleton and Carton. At this moment, even as Ryan is savouring the prospect of blackmail so suddenly presented to him, our second unknown moves in on Ryan and supplants him. It has a kind of tuneful irony, don't you think? Oh, you needn't answer. No. Now, this second unknown now possesses not only Ackerman, but also Ryan's organisation and knowledge. Knowledge of such enormous use and potential that he's forced to kill Ryan. Now, we've been keeping a very close watch on Ryan's scrapyard. And last night, a group of men raided the scrapyard. Inspector Walker here thinks that they were looking for Ryan, uh, reasonably enough. I think that you were looking for Ackerman. Why, Superintendent? Because you're being blackmailed, Lennox, by our second unknown, who, having supplanted Ryan and holding Ackerman, now wants to supplant you, Scott Yanks, the real prize. This is a good theory. There are always rumours of takeover bids when you're as successful as we are. Yes, you should try it out on your colleagues, as you first suggested. I'm sure you'll get a standing ovation. I'm taking this seriously, Lennox. Oh, how can you, without proof? Sticks and stones of evidence. Names can never harm me. We have evidence that your company employed a man named Ackerman. Yes. Where is he now? I have no idea. He was dismissed for drunkenness, I believe. When? I cannot immediately recall the comings and goings of every minor employee. Even for you, Superintendent, I can check if you like. Yes. Do that. Who's blackmailing you, Lennox? Nobody's blackmailing me, although you're trying to with your theory. We shall find this man and Ackerman. Somebody will break. People are always breaking. Thank you, Lennox. That's all. No further questions for me? No. Nope. I'll be glad to answer if I can. No, nope, nothing more. wasted my time telling you what you already know and my solicitors no you're tired superintendent we're all tired Lennox Lennox me and Zeva you can breathe a bit longer your takeover is now complete it all has been where did you get that your phone I'm hoping that you will charge me with illegal invasion of privacy but I suspect that your solicitor will advise you against it, particularly if he's aware of your present predicament, and I'm sure he is. I shall refer this to him. Dead? Right. Didn't get the other name, did you? No need. The theory's near, John. This could force Lennox to flush our second unknown out into the open. Too much bloody sky, look at it. It's dead boring. Doesn't know when to stop. Did you like the country? No. It's got no central heating. Too many stupid sheep. <sighs> right. Yeah. This time I'll tell you, God, so as we can go home. We hide the three-tonner over there. That's bleeding here on the map. Meanwhile, you. Now, you, your torch, your military armband here. You wave down the convoy. Is that how you'll do it? Yes, but better. So as to convince the law you're a real brass-studded military referee, eh? Umpire. So I wasn't a military service dog end. Don't get bitter. 
No, we don't want to convince them, do we? It's all part of the crafty plot. They smell a rat, the van with ghoul drives on, gets blocked by lovely me, Spicer, Christ, and my military vehicle. That's one end of the ambush closed. Meanwhile, you and yours jump the police up there. That's the other end closed. No, you don't listen. We stop the motorcycle escorts. They'll be ahead. It's them and their radios we silence. The other two vehicles with Izzard will block the rear. They silence the police car. I jam the radios the minute you wave them down. Yes, my torch is the signal for all that way. It stays simple. Meanwhile, Big Ears Grange having kept us in touch with their progress from Loughborough by tuning into their wavelength. Yes, as we jump them, he jams them. Just in case in the interval somebody's managed to get a message out. So the radio in the van is the one that's jammed longest? Yes. So it's jammed. It gives you two minutes to get into the prison van. And then we're away. Into the smoke. With Gould. Yeah. Don't you like it? I don't like plans. I don't like the country. I don't like pedigree poodles. But I've got all. Gould had better be worth it. It will be. You get Gould, you've won all. Gould is everything. <laughs> no, Uncle. No. You've uh, no idea who killed your daughter? No. No, why? No. Does the name uh, Ackerman mean anything to you? No. He was employed by your company, Gould. Not while I was in charge. Rumour has it that you are uh, still in charge, through Lennox. Untrue. <laughs> I've wasted my time coming up to Loughborough, haven't I, Gould? That was your idea, Inspector, not mine. Your daughter's death. Get out, Upset you. you? Yes. Yes, yes. Ryan's dead, too. Yeah, I heard. News travels fast, in a note. Thank you. <clears throat> How many more years you got to serve? I forget, Inspector. Why don't you look it up? Cooperation? Won't get me remission. Might ease your conditions. I hear you're being moved to Parkhurst. Yes. Why promise what you can't perform, Inspector? Favourable report from me? Would get lost in the files. I've nothing further to say to you. Inspector Walker. Ryan left the scrapyard about five, and I stayed on as night watchman. Yes. Yes, I'll speak to Walker. Take him out, will you? Look, you've held me here for 15 hours. Of which you've slept eight, more than some of us. Out. Yes, John. Hmm? Gould said nothing. Yeah. And you interpret that as hope that he'll be sprung? I see. I'll have to look into the arrangements for his transfer to Parkhurst. Yeah. Bye, sir. Good luck. Lennox? Me. You'd better get ready to pay. I pay on delivery. It's all right. It's not a bloody war I'm off to. Isn't it? Anyway, 
You always said I was lucky. Yes. You sure hadn't said it back. They're waiting. All right. Okay. Cheers. We follow Hogarth's convoy. You and the others remain in Brentford as agreed. We will conclude Mr. Gould's release from Hogarth in Brentford. Just about this year, Ryan, it says, God is truth, God is love, except in bleeding Reddick. <laughs> Stabulary. 
Okay, sir. They're just approaching Newbury. Great. Good luck. And you? Me? Now I've got it. Final touch, especially for you. This is no kid's game. You need it, Nis. So put it on. Bloody hell. 
Jesus, gold. Yeah, but despite everything. Put this on. And you take that stupid mask off. What's the matter? Don't you fancy it? I'm hot. So I hear. <laughs> he said your man Lennox would be in a kill. Certainly intends to be. Thank you.